okay, I must say that I'm kind of surprised we do nothing and all things just going well. Just to point that out. Man, half an hour of plot twist and not plot twist, but you know, it isn't going well. And we just sitting here. But what is this line on our arms? Oh, Paimon hasn't heard any sounds outside for a while. Hopefully something bad didn't happen. Yeah, but aren't you scared that we might be locked up in here for the rest of our lives? <sighs> Thinking about it, at least Paimon has you. We could still chat like this. When Paimon thinks of Nahida being imprisoned alone in the Sanctuary of Surasvana, Paimon can't help but feel sorry for her. Here comes your savior. Thank you, my queen. Yeah! Paimon just knew you would come to rescue us! You two really owe me some big thanks. I had to search through who knows how many guards to find the key here. It felt even more tiring than whacking them. I'm exhausted. Thanks a lot. Need Paimon to rub your shoulders? Uh, n no, n no, that's, uh, I I'll pass. What are you afraid of? Oh, are you ticklish? Ugh, now isn't the time to talk about being ticklish. At least you know what to do. I'm trusting you in this. Things in the city and on Sino's side are both going well. The guards that stormed out of the Academia are all taken care of. The Corps of Thirty is in charge of the city's defenses, but we already talked to Asvand. They've been fed up with the sages bossing them around. As long as it doesn't break their employment contracts, they'll turn a blind eye. That's probably because you've been super great friends with them for a long time. So, how's Sino doing? The Grand Sage is in his custody. Even I know how terrible it is to fall into Sino's hands, so he probably does too. Sino forced him to release Lesser Lord Kusanali. He has no choice but to obey. So, hurry to the Sanctuary of Suristhana. Assuming nothing weird happened, we should have already rescued our Archon. Honestly, I didn't expect our ragtag bunch to do this well. We just came together last minute to save the Archon, you know? All right, you two better go. I still have to clean up some messes in the city. See you around. See you in your banner. Guys. I think it's about time for boss fight. Boss fight. So I'm gonna take a little break and return because man, I'm really tired. I think I have like four session of recording. So see you soon. Okay, I took a little break. Aka, I have to do this tomorrow, and today is the day. I guess we in the last in the last step for this climax so yeah i think we're gonna face scammers i'm ready for this i'm waiting so long to kid his ass It's nice to meet you. This is the first time we've met in real life. Before, we've only met in dreams, consciousness, or when I was in someone else's body. I 
thank you so much for coming to rescue me. But I also need to apologize. During this time, I did some self-reflection. My sense of inferiority and yielding to the academia led to all of this, and created so much trouble for you all. Exactly! We're here because you're a good Archon and one of our friends! <laughs> Thanks, you two. Amazing. So this is how it feels to walk out of that cage with my own body. It's like I just had an endlessly long dream. I can't even tell if I just woke up or was only now born into this world. My concept of self has become so clear. <clears throat> but now doesn't seem to be the time to indulge in this feeling. Hmm. Beating scammers or try to save the world? Hard choice. Um, this is really embarrassing. You all just rescued an Archon, and now she needs your help to save her country, and even the entire world. Don't worry, we all are used to this by now. It's okay. With you here, Paimon's sure that everything will work out. There's one more thing. What is it? For all the things the Academia did to me, and for all the folly it committed in the name of wisdom, as their Archon, I will make them pay. Ah! Wow! That's the spirit! You're finally standing up for yourself and not letting people walk all over you! <laughs> I understand now. To be a better Archon, I first need to better myself. If you haven't even figured out how to be a caterpillar, how can you be a butterfly? Yes, true. Hmm, that reminds me. I wonder how far along the Academia is with their god creation plan. We need to hurry and prevent the birth of that false god. I need to make some preparations. Since I'm now free, I can establish a direct link to the Akasha and control it. Oh, come on, really? We in the endgame, no more shit back. We have to go now. But I guess you can control everyone now. First things first. I need to remove the restrictions that the doctor put on me in the Akasha. After that, I'll make some adjustments and revoke the sage's permissions. The Akasha will then be like how it originally was, only operable by the Archon. After all, the Academia betrayed Greater Lord Rukadovata's trust. This might take some time. In the meantime, you should also work on your own preparations. If we don't stop the God Creation Plan in time, we'll be in for a tough fight. How's it going, Nahida? I'm done with the parts that needed my involvement to complete. Although it's my first time working with the Akasha like this, its internal structure and operation procedures are easy for me to understand. Greater Lord Rukadavata's design is truly brilliant. Oh, also, this is for you. What is that? Huh? What's this little floaty thingy? Is this a, a Paimon replacement? Perfect. It's a small device I put together just now. You can think of it as an upgraded Akasha terminal. You may not need it right now, but it should be helpful in certain situations. Wait! This thing has the same characteristics as Paimon! We're both small things that float! Aww, all the things that make Paimon special got copied! When Paimon appears with the Traveler from now on, people won't remember! Paimon, because she isn't unique anymore! <laughs> it's alright, Paimon. It can't replace you. 
It's only a flying device, but you're the traveler's irreplaceable friend. <sighs> you're so good at comforting people, Nahida. If only the traveler was as smart as you. Hey, now. And you wonder why I easily replace you with other pets. Hmm? I was simply telling you what I feel to be the truth. I wasn't trying to comfort you. Nahida, you're natural at this. What you just said made Paimon even happier. By the way, there's something I need to confess. Even though I'm the Archon and in control of myself again, I'm not very good at fighting. You may have heard that an Archon's power is derived from their people's faith. However, I'm not as well loved as Greater Lord Ruka Devata. If we get into a situation where combat is our only option, I'll have to count on you and I'll do my best to provide support. I'm glad I can rely on you. Hmm. So the God of Wisdom isn't good at fighting? That actually sounds about right. I've located where the false god is. Time is of the essence, so let's skip to it. What is this place? Is this really the way we need to go? Wow. Who would have thought there'd be a place like this hidden right slap bang in the middle of the city? The sages wanted to realize their god creation plan without being discovered. The safest and most convenient way would be to build within the academia itself. Hmm, that's true. They were already hiding one god, so why not two? Judging from the structure here, the project is a huge undertaking. The sages really saw the god creation plan as their ultimate goal. But this place doesn't look like it could have been constructed by the Academia alone. The Fatui under the Doctor sure didn't hold back. They provided a lot of technological support. Yeah! Or else they wouldn't have been that generous. Is that it, though? I've always felt that this Doctor is different from the Academia Sages. He doesn't seem to share their sense of urgency. Okay, I want to say that isn't Valadi kind of betrayed of a tree? Why? Again, this is a factor that we kind of forget. The Valadil deep out from the Fatui. But, but they are still going with this, creating a god. It's, all, it's also almost like they kind of, I don't know, massive plot hole. Just saying. Instead of being interested in the end product, it's like he's enjoying the experimental process. Hmm. The Fatui Harbingers are all such weirdos. So, the doctor being weird is actually normal. So, this Fatui that they're trying to turn into a god is called the Balladeer? We had previously come into contact with his consciousness. He harbors particularly strong obsessions. One is the desire for a gnosis, since he was created to be the vessel for one. The other obsession is probably related to his past. I can't quite explain it. Paimon knows that he was a prototype puppet for the Raiden Shogun before he became a Fatui Harbinger. That's why he wants a gnosis so badly. There's no way he'd willingly be a test subject. Now with that temper and ego of his... It sounds like you know the Balladeer quite well. We kind of meet like three or four times at best. I see. Tell me more about him and what he's like. The more we know now, the better we can plan for and react to any future situation. Ah, I see. 
How fascinating. All right, time to go. Let's get through here and meet him in person. Oh, hello. I will have order. Gather. Hi. Send this quickly. Now you shall perish. Finished. Now I feel like Spider Man. It looks like we can climb up these pipes. Seems all messed up. Let's go around and see if there's a way to fix it. Every its operational status, we must prepare for the worst. The god they wanted to create is likely close to completion or already completed. Probably the first time I faced with a calamity of this degree since my birth. I feel not just nervous, but curious as well. Curious? Curious about what? Curious about our fate. To me, everything we perceive in this world, everything we learn, and everything that happens to us is considered knowledge. And if it's a form of knowledge, then it can be understood. However, only fate is about that which has yet to occur, so it has always drawn my curiosity. So to me, fate is the ultimate knowledge. That's also why I love observing humans and all the things that happen to them. It all brings me great satisfaction. And now, at long last, I'm not just an observer anymore. I will personally experience my own fate with you by my side. <laughs> Isn't this such a wonderfully exciting thing? Ah, so that's what you mean. Paimon thinks she understands what you're feeling. Agreed. Okay, let's continue on. I can sense his aura from here. Oh, 
Whoa. When are you gonna teleport me? so eager for my birth. I remember you, Boer, the god of wisdom, and standing beside you, the Traveler. Is heal knowing and powerful now like Greater Lord Ruka Devada? No, I can't feel the same kind of divinity I felt from the Greater Lord. It seems that the sages didn't get the chance to infuse the divine knowledge capsules into him. But even still, he has undoubtedly become a true god now. <sighs> so we're too late? The Balladeer has already... already become a god? The Balladeer. A long bygone title. When my spirit ascended to divinity, I felt as if I had existed for the same number of epochs as heaven and earth. Looking back, the existence of what once called itself Kuni Kazushi appears infinitely small and ugly. This imposing aura... It really feels like a god! A body that capitalizes on the Balladeer's original construction as a mechanical puppet, with the Gnosis serving as a constant power supply. How much effort and resources did the Sages put into this? From a purely technological perspective, it's a commendable achievement indeed. It's no exaggeration to say, this is the culmination of human wisdom. You sure are something! Dishing out compliments at a time like this? But I don't think he's reached the spiritual height of a god. Strife is engraved upon every god and every gnosis brought forth into this world. Can you feel it? The exhilaration of such power and the thrill of anticipation for our contention. Nahida wouldn't feel the same things as you! Do you not realize that you are interrupting a conversation between gods? Lowly creature, Know your place! Okay, to be honest, I want to say now because Paimon sees something that I know that's gonna be some kind of plot twist. If the Valadir that now considers Xamath of a god, I bet he says something more to that, but I guess maybe I overthink it. The strife engraved upon a Gnosis. You're talking about the Archon War. Tavat's current peace was not easily won. I didn't personally participate in the Archon War, but the way I see it... All those losses were meaningless, driven by the demands of the laws. There's no point in bringing it up again. <laughs> Is that so? Yet I am deeply disappointed that I was never allowed the fortuity to personally participate in the Archon War. This is a first, encountering a god in this world who does not crave power. No wonder your own people have abandoned you, god of wisdom. <laughs> your judgment is as your existence, unsubstantial. This is where everything ends, Boor, the god of wisdom. You should know that wisdom cannot solve every problem. Like now, where your only option is to face me in combat. Oh, trust me, I wait for that moment for a long time. And again, where do the burning come from? Because 
she was even a little girl's school and I on the hida simply. Come! Let us reenact a scene of the Archon War. Come and inaugurate my birth as a god. Gather! Perish! Illusion shattered! Shurn! Solidify! Can you have the last attack? 